Now let's summarize where we are with our pressure vessel analysis. It's a cylindrical pressure vessel. It is a closed ended cylindrical pressure vessel. I've indicated what would happen if we had a open ended or for that matter a spherical pressure vessel. Those are also cases that we could similarly consider in the context of our example, but presently it is closed ended and thin walled cylindrical pressure vessel, all of which help me to deduce that based on equilibrium only. So what I've done up to this point has got nothing to do with material behavior, could be isotropic and isotropic, uh, etc. Okay, um, linear elastic and so on. So uh, I say that with some level of caution, because then the geometry distortion could be different. In particular, if we we're in isotropic, it's hard to see what would happen. But certainly, I have not invoked linear elasticity so far and isotropic linear elasticity in particular up to this point. And what I found out that I have associated with the three directions x, t or theta, the tangential direction and radial direction, I have three normal stresses. There is a sigma x, there is a sigma t and there is a sigma r. We've taken this to be zero with some level of caution, but that's a safe assumption. We've found out that the tangential stress is PR over T, whereas the axial one is half of that, PR over 2T. Now the question is, what are the strains? Because I need to know what they are to find the dimension changes. And now I can go ahead and apply the generalized Hooke's law in terms of this coordinate system. It's really doesn't matter, as I said, what I call them, the law is going to apply. So don't be confused why, by how we denote those coordinate directions. So it's going to be 1 over E, sigma x, the stress in the corresponding direction, the argument still remains the same, minus nu times the Poisson effect, so T plus R, and 1 over E, sigma T, 1 minus nu, sigma x plus sigma R, and 1 over E sigma R minus nu sigma X plus sigma T. Okay, stress in the corresponding direction minus nu times stresses in the remaining direction. So by the way, uh, we remember that the ratio of R to T is 300, P is 2 MPa and therefore this is 600 MPa and this is 300 MPa. So in fact, we immediately see that although P itself seems to be a small stress, indeed sigma R, that's why we neglected it, the stresses that I invoke, invoked in the material itself are actually quite large. These are significant stresses. So now, uh, that's the, that's the um, effect of a thin wall, and moreover, due to that effect, we are omitting sigma R, so it's zero, it's zero, it's gone from these equations. And we know the values of E and nu, 200 GPa and 0.3 respectively. I know sigma x and the tangential stress, and I can go ahead and calculate the values of the strains. So I invite you to do that on your own. You will find that this is equal to 600 times 10 to the minus 6. It's unitless. I can alternatively call it 600 micro strains, right? Not microns, that would be. 10 to the minus 6 meters, just micro strains, takes care of that 10 to the minus 6 factor. And epsilon t would be uh, larger, equal to that value. And we see that despite the fact that we don't have a radial stress, we do have a radial strain. And that is the effect of generalized Hooke's law. And it's 1.1350 1, 1, micro strains. Now, here we can immediately think about whether these results make sense or not. Uh, well, it's hard to say quantitatively if they're correct or not, but I can think about whether they make sense or not. And I can do that because I can look at their signs. And I know that, well, uh, the pressure is trying to burst this thing apart, so it's going to try to elongate, it's positive, it's going to try to expand, it is positive, okay? Now, I'm already associating with strain, so with certain dimension changes, but eventually, um, the wall thickness is going to get thinner, and that's why epsilon r is negative. Now, um, 
where there is clearly going to be a negative strain because I do expect the wall's thickness to get smaller. And that I can think of by doing a simple experiment where I take a balloon, simple rubber balloon, and you try to expand it. And you can see actually as you blow, as you, as you uh, blow into it, that the wall thickness does get thinner as the rubber, extend, rubber balloon extends. So one of the strains, it turns out in this case, epsilon r is negative. So that must have to do with the wall thickness variation. That's why I already made that association as I was narrating, right? Um, so this is a meaningful, uh, meaningful um, observation. It seems to be reasonable. But let's rigorously now associate these strains with dimension changes because then I can calculate what the dimension changes are. Okay, so now um, I am looking at the cylindrical portion because the question asks us what are the dimension changes associated with the cylindrical portion and that was the cylindrical portion that I had just drawn. Okay, And that's the axial direction. Um, this is the tangential direction and the out of plane direction is the radial direction on here the out of plane direction would be the radial direction and so which strain has now to do with which dimension there is a length here there is a thickness here and there is a radius here which also is denoted with r similar to the dimension so which dimension is associated with which strain. So for instance, epsilon x could be change in length divided by original length, right? This type of thing. What shall I associate with what? So think about that for a few seconds before listening further into the video. But the way I like to think about this problem is to actually, again, take a cut and after I cut it, I will open up this cylinder into a sheet virtually right not in reality so in other words i'm gonna open it up like this okay so i am i've taken a cut along this line and that's the where i took the cut and now, as I said, I am opening this up virtually towards a sheet and ultimately I get a sheet. And the length of that sheet is L. The thickness of that sheet is T. Okay, it's in red. And finally, the, the, um, that is T and the width is the circumference, which is two pi R. Okay. Um, now notice that this direction, the length direction, is the x direction. So there is no doubt about that. That's x. The thickness direction is the radial direction. So there is no also doubt about that. So this is the radial direction. And ultimately, the direction that takes me around the circumference, around that direction, or therefore around in that direction, in the virtual opened up thin wall cylinder, that is the tangential direction. So epsilon t, the normal strain along t, for instance, would therefore have to do with the change in that dimension divided by the original length. The original length is 2 pi r, the change would be delta r times 2 pi r. Okay, Epsilon x that's the normal strain along that direction. The original length is L. The change in the length would be delta L. In that direction, the original length is T. And the change in the length is going to be delta T. So I just want to clean up that drawing. 
that's better. Okay. Um, and therefore, we have explicit expressions for these quantities. I know the initial length, which was equal to, let me remind you, 10 meters. I know the value of the radius, which was equal to 1.5 meters. And I know the initial thickness, which was equal to 5 millimeters. And hence, you can calculate from these that given with the knowledge of the normal strains, you can find that the change in the length is about 6 millimeters. The change in the radius is 3.825 millimeters. And the change in the thickness is equal to minus 6.75 times 10 to the minus 3 millimeters or 6.75, negative 6.75 micrometers. Um, and now you see we have rigorously related each direction with each dimension. In this case, tangential T goes with delta R, whereas the thickness goes with the radius. Um, to some extent, it's an unfortunate choice of notation. I could have called these directions 1, 2, 3, and then there is no relation between T and T or R and R. But the point is, don't be confused by the choice of indices or notation or letters. Remember the concepts, remember the geometry, and as long as you apply those concepts correctly, step by step, you will end up with the correct result and eventually the correct interpretation. So I correctly interpreted epsilon r with t and I deduced that delta t must decrease, the thickness must decrease and that's indeed what I observe in an experiment where I blow a rubber balloon. Now a rubber balloon is not deforming small, it's not linear elasticity but still indicative of the physics and that is the correct physics.